And now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys, welcome to the news section. Um, this is actually not live, it's a pre-recorded session because unfortunately I couldn't join uh, the live stream this time. Um, what I do want to say is many thanks to the people that have uh, tagged me on Twitter and um, Telegram with uh, news links because it's hard to keep up with uh, the myriad of news that happen every single week. Um, so if you do have anything that you want me to cover, please um, tag me and then I'll take a look and then maybe I'm going to um, include it in, in the news section. Uh, but the links are in the, in the description if you do want to check them out. And without further ado, let's get into it. Um, for the first thing, we're going to talk about crypto lenders are suffering as Bitcoin miners are unable to pay back gigantic loans. If we go on the article, it says, as miners fail to pay back loans, crypto lenders are stuck with a bunch of mining rigs as uh, as collateral. Um, so if they couldn't repay the loans, they simply gave up the machines. Machines, by the way, whose value dropped at least 85% from just last month, according to the reporting. And at its height, the crypto lending industry, Bloomberg, estimates that as much as $4 billion worth of mining equipment has been financed. Um, so it's a lot. It's a lot of money um, involved in ASIC mining for um, for Bitcoin. And it's unfortunate, but that's that's what uh, Bitcoin chose. It chose to use um, ASIC mining instead of um, CPU mi mining, which not only makes it way more affordable, but it also makes it more decentralized. And the thing is, when you have an ASIC versus a CPU, ASIC is very, very specific. But when it comes to CPU, you can use that power to mine on arrow and maintain true decentralization, or you can use it for video editing and, and all these other stuff, right? Um, which makes it better than ASICs from um, every single standpoint. Um, so I just wanted to mention this because I thought it was um, interesting. And then I'm going to tie it actually into Michael Saylor and uh, Bitcoin because um, obviously, we know that he thinks that uh, there's no second best to, to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uh, number one. And he's urging the SEC to shut down Ripple. And he says that Ethereum and XRP are unregistered securities. And one proposition that um, I didn't like um, is um, he said, and I quote, I think the best thing for the world would be if the SEC pretty much shut down all of it all coins meaning it's all unethical <laughs> it's all unethical oh but um bitcoin is the only one that is ethical right it's the only one uh, now as we know michael Saylor does know about monero and um, he should know that there's no way to just tell the sec and whisper hey can you shut down monero because you can't shut down monero that's not possible the sec can can't go around the whole world and just go knock on every single door and say Hey, do you mind Monero? And you're going to say no. All right. Uh, hey, do you mind Monero? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, stop mining it. <laughs> it's not feasible. I mean, it's not, it's not going to happen. Um, so it just, it's just interesting um, to see the extent of which um, he goes to protect, I guess, Bitcoin because he, obviously he owns a lot of it and his, um, a lot of his personality in the space is tied around Bitcoin. Um, so interesting, interesting. Interesting article, and uh, I do want to mention that Monero surpassed uh, Ethereum Classic to become the number four proof of work token by market cap. No, I mean it's gonna surpass Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is gonna surpass surpass Monero, um, meaning that they all go up and down, up and down. You know, ultimately it doesn't matter. What it, it's going to happen um, is that Monero is gonna be top five, or at least it should be. It used to be top five, and it should be again top five because it's if we are really going to use one of them as a currency, it should be Monero, and so it should be you know um, top five at least, not top twenty something that it is now. Um, so it keeps going up, it keeps going down, but ultimately it's holding itself steady, and I'm really curious to see where um, the price is going to go in, in the future. I, I don't care about the price necessarily. Um, I just want the privacy and and um, Monero to do what it's supposed to do. But you know, there's a price attached to it, so 
Um, yeah, we'll see where that's gonna go. Uh, now, while talking about Monero, um, Seth for privacy gave a talk at MoneroCon about uh, layer two network in Monero. Uh, Monero is very scalable uh, by default, but people have been talking about uh, layer two. And uh, Seth for privacy has a lot of experience with um, with the Lightning Network. And um, in this talk, um, he gives stuff like Monero's unique benefits for layer twos and which is uh, on-chain privacy leads to far greater node level privacy in the layer two, discover payment channels, reveal no extra information, social consensus enabled enforcing fungible channel open slash closed taxations, and base layer is not relying on fees so we can move as much or as little off-chain as is helpful. He also mentions uh, how we should differ from light network and um, the current approaches. So he gives a lot of information it's a really wonderful video that um, everybody should check out um, if you're interested um, and leave a like, leave a comment, um, share it. And um, please, please do check it out. Um, it's really interesting. Honestly, it's really interesting. Now, I want to talk about, uh, since I mentioned uh, Monero, right? Uh, but what a bunch of criminals, the people that use this currency. Um, <laughs> Um, I want to mention um, Binance and how they're team, teaming up with uh, former IRS agents to seek to keep crypto crime free. Ultimately, of course, um, we want to keep finance crime free, terrorism free, and um, and all these things. Um, but the way you would do this, obviously, is through some level of transparency. And if you give that level of transparency to the government, like give them one finger and they'll take the, the whole hand, right? Um, we just can't trust trust the government, and that's why we have Monero, which protects criminals, it protects terrorists, yeah, but it also protects the vast majority that don't do those things. Um, you know, because it's just like a small percentage of people that engage in these um, nefarious activities. But um, yeah, Binance has been extending operations into into um, sort of policing the crypto realm, which is transparent. So you can't do that, except Monero, but everything everything else, you know, everybody can take a look and see where the money moves and everything on the, on the blockchain. Uh, but to quote um, what Price said, and um, this guy is the head of intelligence and investigations for the Americas at Binance. He is a former IRS agent, also spent a, a stint as a targeting officer with the CIA. <laughs> Okay, um, but he said, when I saw crypto and the fact that you have this permanent blockchain record of all the transactions, that kind of really piqued my interest, right? Because it's permanent, it's uh, um, transparent, so it's there forever. Um, yeah, so I'm just curious to see where uh, Binance is ultimately going to, going to take this, um, this policing. Um, but so now Binance is a centralized exchange. And let's talk about a decentralized exchange. Um, and there's uh, one that um, is new. I mean, it's been under development for a long time. And uh, even they said, from what I understand, that they haven't put a lot of marketing effort into it just because they're focusing on the product and trying to make it really, really good. Um, but um, we had the guys from Basic Swap, which is a privacy first cross chain DEX. Um, uh, which is Monero friendly as well, and so uh, we actually got them um, on uh, Monero Talk. We should, we should, um, you should check out uh, uh, the recording. is one and a half hours. Uh, Three point five thousand people um, tuned in, and uh, it was just like a really good conversation. The guys are awesome from from the decks, and um, it's really exciting that you we have another avenue, another privacy tool uh, that we we can use. So um, check out. Particle uh, news, check out the website, check out Basic Swap, and check out uh, the Monero uh, podcast that we've done with the people from uh, from them. And um, then I also want to mention that the team, us, <laughs> needs help uh, because it's, you know, this show is a lot. Like, there's so many things that you guys don't see, and uh, these things take a lot of time. So we do need uh, more people to help us. And if you feel like you can help us in any way, you have the email monerotopia at protonmail.com. Um, so please uh, email us and, and let us know if you're interested in uh, collaborating with us.
and um, that'll be that'll be lovely. <laughs> now I don't I want to mention um, the Monero standard now from my friend Stoic. We've been talking about this book for a couple months, and um, I think we started talking about it before even came about you know like him actually writing the book and um, he said yeah you know there's nothing in this space like it and i said yeah you should write it and then uh, he, he just started and then a couple months later uh, we actually almost have the book um it's almost done the pre-sale is now live so you can actually buy the book so please buy the book um show support um i bet that i haven't read the book uh, yet but um, I bet that it's a well-written book. Uh, so give a like, retweet, buy it. And uh, when it comes out, please um, let Stoic know what, what do you think uh, <laughs> about the book. And uh, now I'm kind of going to more the CBDC stuff. And um, we're going to start with um, Janet Yellen. And um, she tweeted um, a picture of herself holding what um, looks to be um, a freshly printed dollar. And she said, our currency should reflect our country. Well, if your currency is shit, you know, is that gonna reflect your country? <laughs> because the dollar is just like, okay, like any other currency is just hyperinflated. It's made, it's constructed to make your life more difficult, worse. And we've seen it with the um, price increases and your salary staying the same and um, I'm just thinking, like, because these people know what they're doing, but yet they're smiling and they're, you know, proposing these things and uh, trying to show it as something else. Um, but she says, to me, these new banknotes represent the ongoing work of Treasury to strengthen our economy and are a reminder of the contributions of women um, who have worked in the economy, economics of profession and served the Treasury Department. Sure, Janet, sure. As you say um no one really believes you <laughs> and if and if anybody does then that's uh, that's sad and they should learn more about the economy um but let's talk more about um control for a little bit and um let's take a look at china's uh, police drones that have um <laughs> weapons on them so it's a big drone with a big weapon and the drone itself and the weapon is controlled by some remote. So I don't think it's using artificial intelligence to actually find the robot. But soon it will, if we don't have that already. I'm sure we do. So, scary stuff. Scary stuff, but I want to take that and um, now I want to take it into uh, Justin Trudeau because um, there's been protests in, in China and um, you know Trudeau is trying to, to come forward as um, a man of peace and a man of um, a man that supports freedom of speech, um, which he's not known for, obviously, because he's done horrible things. Um, but he said on Tuesday that everyone in China should be allowed to protest and express themselves and that Canadians were closely watching the protests against the country's zero COVID um, policy. Um, Canadians are watching very closely, Trudeau told reporters in Ottawa. Everyone in China should be allowed to express themselves, should be allowed to share their perspectives and indeed protest. Well, how about you start with your own country first? And then you mind China. How about that? And in this video we can see Canadian policemen beating people for just peacefully protesting. Just it's infuriating, it's um it's sad, it's depressing. So yeah, are these the people that you wanna give transparency in your in your finance for the name of uh, crime i don't at least i don't trust them and you shouldn't trust them as well based on history and based on what they're doing right now as well we should never trust the government ever again trust them as little as possible and life will flourish differently 
And then Biden posted a picture in which he said, you hired me to get things done. I hope I'm making you proud. Listen, I don't like any of them. I don't like Biden. I don't like any of them. I think they're all clowns. I think they're all, they're all puppets. Uh, but you're not making me proud. And I'm not sure what things you got done. Uh, but they weren't really good things <laughs> overall, especially the economy. <laughs> um, it's infuriating whenever I see these uh, tweets and I refrain from commenting what I really think. But yeah. Um, now, <laughs> in this image, uh, we can see um, Christine Lagarde, and she's the uh, president of the European Central Bank. And someone wrote, what do you mean by no KYC Bitcoin? Uh, because obviously she wants KYC Bitcoin, right? Or she wants KYC. Now, if you go on ecb.europa.eu, she actually gave a video address and um, to a high-level conference in, in which she uh, talked about the digital euro, right? And um, she mentioned privacy. And she said that um, the first concern when it comes to the euro, it's it's a privacy. And 43% um, of respondents ranked privacy as the most important aspect of the digital euro, well ahead of other features. Um, so it is clear that if we want the digital euro to be attractive, it needs to be designed in a way that meets people's privacy expectations. Uh, we seek to ensure high standards of privacy for digital euro users. But f here's the catch, right? Here's the catch. But full anonymity, such as offered by cash, does not appear a viable option, in my opinion. It would contravene other public policy objectives, such as ensuring, again, listen, compliance with anti-money laundering rules and combating the financing of terrorism. So, again, of course, we don't want terrorism. We don't want criminals, you know, um, to use money and launder it and, you know, do all this stuff. But, um, yes, that's horrible. But they use that in the name of stealing your freedom essentially that's what that's what that's what they're doing um so um we should at least provide a level of privacy equal to that of current electronic payment solutions um yeah so don't expect much privacy from any cbdc <laughs> um and then we have iran and um they've been protesting the women have been protesting against the hijab and it's a huge protest. Um, actually, Ava, um, the person that um, is editing the videos for uh, Moneratopia and Monero Talk, she's actually from Iran, and she's living through um, these horrifying protests. And um, it's, I think she even mentioned that it's hard for her to even leave her house. Uh, so it's really, really sad. But what I do want to mention is the fact that now they took it, took it a step further. Um, they're actually shutting down the bank accounts or freezing the accounts, but it's kind of like almost the same thing in this situation um, of the protesters. Um, so let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, so woman judged not have to, uh, not to have respected the complete hijab have been banned from government offices, banks, and public transportation from all these things. And no, it's it's um, madness. It's absolutely mad. And um, as we can see from Coin Telegraph as well, Iran set to freeze bank accounts a woman who refused to wear a job. And um, let's see over here. Uh, so essentially, in the third stage, uh, which is a warning phase, um, the bank account of the real person may be frozen. Um, and the way that they're doing this is that actually they have um, artificial intelligence cameras and they can just quickly identify them. And from there, um, yeah, and then from there, they just do whatever they want to do. So um, it's really horrible. It's nothing new. China has been doing this. So, uh, but other countries are, are catching up and it's always easy to go after the bank account because that's, that's the person's you know, uh, life, you know, I mean, they, they you know, their, their life revolves around it. They might have kids, they might, they, they need, they need the money, obviously. So uh, they go for the weakest point, which is that, and with the CBDC, I mean, they can take it 
why is it beyond the levels of control that they have uh, currently? But it's, um, now in this article, um, it says that some central banks reportedly looking to issue a CBDC within 10 years. We already have some CBDCs, some countries expected in three years, five years, some in 10. I don't think it's gonna take 10 years. I mean, 10, in 10 years is gonna be 20, 2032. So, and things change so fast. So I don't think it's gonna take 10 years. I think it's gonna take way less than that. Um, but in um, 2020, only, only 35 countries were interested in a CBDC, but by, uh, but recently, actually 105 countries are, are exploring a CBDC. Um, so more and more countries are interested. The Bahamas, Nigeria, Eastern Caribbean, and Jamaica have already issued a CBDC. Well, China, China is, I mean, they've been using CBDC for quite some time right now, and they've uh, handled um, large transactions uh, through their CBDCs. So if you didn't think that they're coming, Yes, they're coming. The digital euro is coming. The digital dollar is coming. Uh, they're all coming. They're all coming. They're all part of part part of uh, their plan. Um, yeah, Spain has been experimenting with a wholesale CBDC, and a wholesale CBDC is just a CBDC that is not meant for retail. It's not meant for us. It's meant just um, um, to keep the um, reserves. Uh, of the country, essentially, right? So it's not meant for us, it's just for the reserves with a central bank. And this is what the article talks about. And then uh, Nigeria. Nigeria has the E-Naira, which is, which is a CBDC, but actually less than 0.5% of the people use the CBDC, so less than 0.5%. This is such a small number. Like almost nobody is using it, and this is why now they're trying to force people um, to to use it. Um, and the way that they're doing this is that they're um, capping the amount that they can withdraw from the ATMs, which is uh, 225 per week or $45 per day. <laughs> so uh, by capping the amount of dollars that you can withdraw, they're limiting the cash that is out there. And so they're making, they're forcing people to use uh, the CBDC, which so far has not been um, used at all because people, people want cash, they want their cash, right? So um, it's interesting and um, people would have no choice but to use CBDC or um, going to something like Monero. Uh, but with that, they need education and and other things, um, you know, and we're all working on it. So um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I'm really curious of what the numbers are gonna be like for the e and and their adoption um in the future as they as they um produce more and more regulations and uh, the last thing that i want to mention for the new section is uh pakistan wants to launch their cbdc by 2025 so this is in three years like it's coming very very soon and um, the state of bank of pakistan signed in new laws for electronic money institutions, non-bank entities offering digital payment instruments to ensure the timely issuance of a CBDC in the next um, three years, so by 2025. Um, so in short, there's a lot of countries interested in CBDCs, and once you have the big players in CBDCs, everybody's gonna join. You know, it's just like, it's gonna be a dominoes effect. So. CBDCs are coming, and the way that you protect yourself against CBDCs is by buying Monero with cash right now. Because once the CBDCs are coming, Monero is going to be <laughs> harder to get because they can just say no, you can't, you can't use it there, you can't do that. What are you doing here? And, and all these things. Um, so yeah, guys, um, thank you so much for joining, joining us today uh, for the new section. Um, the links are again in in the description. And make sure that you like, subscribe, and uh, share. And we'll see you next time. And yeah, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.